Today we are visiting Lamphy Bishop's Palace. It was built at the behest of the Bishop of St David's as a retreat. Most of what we see today was constructed under Bishop Henry de Gower in the 14th century. The palace was surrendered to King Henry VIII during the dissolution of the monasteries and was granted to Richard Devereux and subsequently the Earls of Essex. So the tower I'm standing in front of now provides access to the bishop's quarters, which apparently was nice and secluded away from the hustle and bustle. This is in fact called the inner gate house. There are some stairs that I can go and have a look up to what was probably the bishop's apartment. So that is where I'm going now. The stairs are quite narrow and uh, uneven, but there are ropes to help you up. Kind of looks more like a pigeon loft than a, than a bishop's room. This funny little building, it's a two-storey affair, it's got three little arches underneath and then it's got this room above and you have to wonder, what was it? According to the maps it's additional accommodation but if this is just additional accommodation, how lavish must it have once been? The main building is over there and I should imagine that it was lavish. They had money to burn clearly because if you're just going to build a bit of additional accommodation and make it this nice. I mean, admittedly, you know, it's it's no longer got plaster on the walls and of course the roof is gone, but downstairs is still intact. They spent a lot of money when they built it because they did it properly, because it's still standing. When this was still in use, this must have been lovely. I mean, a really nice getaway for bishops, apparently. Well, the bishop and whoever, you know, was in his retinue that he wanted to take with him, I suppose. all along this wall was a corn barn and those vents are actually for ventilation. The corn was provided by tenant farmers but this palace was apparently a big money spinner. They produced corn, they had fish ponds so they could get fish, they had orchards, all sorts of things. They had a deer park. They could obviously live off the fat of the land and sell on anything that they didn't use. This it's all about lavish living. It's about the fact that you've got money and power and not only do you want to demonstrate it, but you want to enjoy it. So, to get away from it all, you build yourself something that's essentially palatial. I mean, that's what it is. It's a palace for a bishop. And you could come here and pray in your own personal chapel and you could entertain here in this great big hall, which, I mean, it's currently I'm standing in the downstairs of the thing. There's another floor upstairs. It's all nicely and ornately decorated, or at least it was at the time, judging by the, the plaster and, and the paintwork that you can still see in one of the arched windows. It was nice. And you'd kind of forget that that's really what, for some people in the church, it was like. It was very much a question of, you will be well looked after and chances are these people came from pretty wealthy families anyway, they were used to a certain standard of life, so they built these places. Who can blame them? If you've got the cash you might as well splash it. I've come to around the back of the palace and from here you can really get a sense of the scale of the place because you can walk the entire length and it's really quite peaceful out here because you've got this wall here and you've got those big walls there. It's all quite sheltered, but you can also see you've got some nicely dressed window frames. So this was quite nicely decked out, this, this, little, this little palace. This rather ornate window behind me is what's left of the chapel. Most of the walls of it are gone, all that remains is that bit there and the masonry around the posh window. It's all very well built, but 
Obviously, for some reason, that bit didn't survive as well as some of the other bits. Funny how. That door there looks kind of small and unassuming, and I assumed it was just going to be a small, dingy room. However, that is not what you see at all. What you see is this, a really quite long room with a vaulted ceiling. As you walk down the length of this hall, you see some quite interesting features. You've got the remains of uh, probably quite ornate arches going across the ceilings, but they've all gone. But you can still see the foundations of where they were. But I'm really impressed with this building. I don't know if you can tell. It's made me happy. I don't know why I do love a good vaulted ceiling, and this is a very good vaulted ceiling. So this interesting little piece of graffiti here, I initially overlooked because I wasn't entirely sure who had written it, but it was apparently written by soldiers in World War II. Now this massive hall, I assumed was a dining hall because you could quite comfortably sit an awful lot of people in here, but it is in fact an undercroft or a wine cellar. So <laughs> they must have had an awful lot of wine down here to need a place this big to store it in. Now I've wandered up a really rather narrow spiral stone staircase to come here. And this funny little room was at one point the guard robe, that's the bathroom to you and I, the uh, WC, the water closet. And there's a hole down which I would imagine at some point there were seats and you could come and sit and, you know, do your business. Originally, of course, you wouldn't have had to have come up the spiral staircase. What you'd have done is you'd have walked through from the upstairs of the Western Hall, which is probably where you were being entertained anyway. Your servants, of course, being downstairs, wouldn't have had the opportunity to use the guard robe, I wouldn't imagine. They would have had to make alternative arrangements. This is lavish living. This is an enormous hall for entertaining. And talking of entertaining, if you weren't entertained down here with the lovely food and the, the roaring fires and the, the fun and the entertainment going on, then you could, should you so desire, go upstairs, out beyond the roof, and there was a walkway that went around the parapet. And these fabulous arches that you see above are all part and parcel of a drainage system that would allow them to collect rainwater, but you could also walk along the top of it and have a fantastic look at the view. Off this great hall was a little antechamber, another guard robe. In fact, it had every lavish thing that you could possibly want. This was a really nice building, and it really was made for sort of kicking back, relaxing and enjoying the, the fruits of probably somebody else's labour, let's be honest. So what did you think? I am impressed by the scale of this place. I yeah. kind of, I mean, I'd seen photographs and I'd done a bit of research, but I didn't expect it to be as big as it is. I mean, it's not, it's not Tintin Abbey and Neath Abbey kind of big, I but it's big. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of it that's left and there's little interesting details and you can see this place, and I know this is a, sort of the wrong way to view this, but when it was built, this place must have cost a small fortune. As a retreat, it, I mean, you know, we get holiday cottages now, don't we? And we're happy with that. Imagine having a yeah. palace that you could go and retreat to. That's quite something. I mean, I just wonder how stressful was the job that you needed a palace to retreat to? I mean, it just seems a bit... Much. Yeah, but it does go to show you just how wealthy the well, the, the, the church was. And, had... and the people who were in the church sort of independently of the church. Now, either they had money already and it sort of came through the family because chances are the bishop was probably... Yeah. You know, some landed gentry family. That's kind of possibly it. And this is just the place that he knocked up for himself. Or alternatively, the money came from the church. Who knows? I don't. I don't know. If I've you know, I would, be, I would be intrigued to know. Please, in the comments down below, let us know 
who paid for this place? <laughs> The other interesting thing about it, I think, is the fact that the walls are so thick. The exterior walls, it's got a wall yeah. that goes all the way around the thing. I'm guessing that the wall probably went up post-dissolution of the monasteries when it was no longer being used as a bishop's palace, but it might have gone up before then. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, I think... We shall see you next time. TTFM. <laughs>